All right, welcome to the Gamers Galaxy podcast, where we are going to be covering everything Immutable X and GameStop NFT marketplace. We were going to be covering everything from Web3 gaming and how it's changing the environment of Web3 and what the future looks like. Our hosts today are D'Souza and Rubik, and we have Rubik here who's going to tell us a little bit about himself. Uh, yeah, I'm Rubik. I um, have been a gamer for a few decades and passionate about gaming more than crypto, but I did fall into crypto, which fell, which led me to Axie Infinity. I ran some scholarships for some um, people living in the Philippines, which that was providing food on their table for them. So I kept on investing every cent we got back into other assets so that they can continue to grow their incomes. There was a big crash, as we know, but you know, I'm interested in gaming and I feel that ownership in gaming is really important. And if earning is there as well, and they work that out as well, that that could be a bonus. Um, but yeah, so I, I follow um, Immutable, fell into Immutable because of Gods Unchained and uh, did know about them before, but didn't actually know how, what the, how they operated. So did some real good research, deep research into it and decided that's where I believe and put my bet on where I think the future of gaming is. I think there's a lot of winners, but I think Immutable will be a big pie, piece of the pie. Um, and so, yeah, I started giving information away about Immutable because I felt there was a real lack of information on Immutable and started who I'm at, who I am X. And that led us to you know, where we are today, where we, we think st step it up a bit more, get some guests on the on the show and talk as much as we can about games that are coming out and and uh, the ecosystem in general. So about you, Desus, what what did what did you what led you to this pod? Yeah, um, I started out a uh, avid gamer myself, uh, gaming since I was a kid with uh, my sister and my brother, both older than myself, and I've always been uh, kind of the underdog in the family there in that regard. When always trying to keep up with uh, with my siblings, but. Um, you know, growing up playing games and um, actually having uh, my career being in computers and, and that like, um, I never lost my love for gaming. And fast forward to uh, 2020 when GameStop announced their um, NFT marketplace, um, that really got my interest into Web3 gaming peaked. Um, at that point, I started diving into everything web3 gaming and that led me to uh loopring as well as immutable x um everything that i've done since then has been dedicated to um the web3 infrastructure on imx as well as gamestop um gamestop built their marketplace on the loopring protocol which um once i saw that i started doing um videos instructional videos on my twitch channel teaching people how to actually code their own metadata files um for nfts on loopring so now here we are in uh 2023 and immutable x and, and gamestop are are still leaders in the web3 gaming front and i see like you said rubik um i see there's a lot of room for other people other companies as well but my focus has been primarily with uh, GameStop and, and Immutable X. So that's what we have decided to keep our podcast focused on for this time. Um, what we will be doing is we'll have some amazing guests join us. Hopefully, at least uh, we'll get you know one per week to join us and uh, get some insights into Immutable X and the environment and the ecosystem. Um, that they provide for gamers and and web3 so i think for this uh first section we can talk about the immutable um in infrastructure a little bit and how that looks um now and into the future um yep. so what is the passport and how do you see it um making a difference in web3 gaming uh, so it's a non-custodial um wallet which means that Immutable doesn't have control of the assets, um, but it removes all the friction that a, met, say, a MetaMask or a game, even a GameStop wallet has, where you have to, you know, run transactions, multiple clicks, and things like that. 
um, you know, you log into it with an email get sent to you and you log in it with that email um, passcode. And then ultimately that's it. Um, it will be the big difference between Passport and Immutable's ecosystem is that because they're all integrated, so like the marketplaces all, are all linked together, you know, you list an item on one location on one marketplace, it's, all other marketplaces are able to list it for sale. So that's where the power of Passport is improved on Immutable because of its ecosystem. It's like the Apple of, you know, of the world. Yeah, in the absolutely. Fact that it's got its own, you know, it's got its own closed system of yeah, and products I, that, are, that are built for customers. Sorry, I, I like too that um, the integration of the passport for uh, game makers as well. Um, they don't have to worry about um, a large overhead of of integrating um, a MetaMask or a GameStop or something like that. Um, most game developers are already uh, used to signing some new people up or new players up with their email address um allowing a non-custodial wallet um feature with your email address with a magic passcode if you will magic sign on one time sign on single sign on uh allows yeah. a much broader spectrum of, of user base and then you brought up a great point as well is the ability for the order book to be um global and that means you list it on one marketplace. It is automatically listed on all other um, marketplaces that support the the immutable ecosystem. Well, it's available to them if they want to show it. It's not automatically listed. So, for example, GameStop doesn't have didn't have alluvial alluvial stuff a couple of weeks ago. Correct. So, so the, right. The, so yeah. if that, that that's true. If if if, it's, if it's say <laughs> say say um, if that is very very true. So <clears throat> excuse me. For instance, um, uh, one of the one of the games, uh, Undead Blocks. There were some of the skins or some of the variations of items that they were offering um, that were not listed on GameStop or token trove they were only listed on their you know their order book and then you could see them on other marketplaces but they weren't visible for sale or purchase really i oh, know didn't that's something new to me they can't control that it's because it's an api correct so, so it's an, it's... If someone hits that api they can display it but they can i guess um you know, not tell everyone about it. So um, that therefore, um, but then again, if, if, if they list someone, if an organization lists a, a, a collection on Immutable, the Immutable marketplace collects all and displays all. Of them, all. Yeah. So, so people will be able to see it. You won't be able to hide it and, and keep it for your own ecosystem. I think that's a, that has an, an, a, a lot of negatives to it as well. Like things like OpenSea not integrating with with Immutable, even though they announced it two years ago, I think it's got to do with the, the Immutable marketplace that they won't control the whole the whole the story. If they list something there, someone someone else can sell it. Or I, personally, that's my own personal belief. I have no inside information whatsoever, but I think that's what the delay is from OpenSea. I've heard for over a year Immutable say that they've given it OpenSea everything they need to start the marketplace, and because they don't control the ecosystem like they can with you know, again, in this fight with Blur, like with the ERC, with the, sorry, the layer one, then then that lack of control, I think that scares a lot of the big players away. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. But so, when it comes to the massive advantage, isn't it? Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. For the consumer, it's a massive advantage to be able to sell your product, list it once and see it listed on any marketplace that integrates the API. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. That's the number one. That, that's the that's the bullish thing about it. Uh, you know, the the best thing about it. And then, what about um, NFT trading? How do you see that as um, a bonus on on Immutable? 
Sorry, NFT trading? Yeah. But I, I, that's the first time I've even seen that. You're talking about the... the... Yeah, so I, I've seen the NFT trading um, implemented on um, Hero, where you can actually trade the DC comic um, cards, trading cards, uh, within the app on on hero so that allows for um say you have a card that i don't have and and vice versa and we want to trade each other uh those cards you can actually go into one of the trading rooms in the app and um you add your card and they add their card and once you both approve then um the trade is is um put through and it allows for you know currently there's there's no gas um on immutable x so it doesn't cost um you know you or i uh any anything to do a trade like that it's that's on hro is that what you're saying yeah no interesting i didn't yeah I didn't, so uh know about that that's a i haven't got i don't get too much into collectibles to be honest with, honest with you I was, I was really only interested in the gaming side of things so that's great that you uh had that knowledge <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually I, I purchased a box of the chapter two dc comics um trading cards from gamestop and um you know they're really cool because it it's a hybrid right so you have the physical collectible as well as the digital version and um it it really is a unique um experience and um one of one of the updates that they did to the application was that trading feature so it's a special room where you go in and you find someone else to trade with and and once you find that person to trade with <clears throat> there's uh there's basically an escrow feature that allows you to add your card and them to add their card and do it safely um, without one pulling out and taking, you know, both cards. So it's, uh, it's really nice. And, and the fact that there, there is no, uh, uh, gas fee for doing so is, it makes it really seamless. Interesting. Um, I think we should talk about the, the actual blockchain. Itself Absolutely. Before, before we go to too much into other ones. So immutable X is, um, Stuck, built by Starkware, so their Stark X implementation, which is quite limited in what it can do, compared to a generic, you know, open smart contracts kind of um, kind of blockchain, and that's been one of its downfalls for Mutable is when they win games to build on their ecosystem, they get allured by the the no gas. Um, cost for the customers or them and therefore then when they start to say what they want to do it, they're quite limited to what they can do it, originally immutable used to say that that smart contracts are not needed that's just the ownership side of things but they've obviously seen that not be quite right over over time and therefore hence zk evm and they were building stark where uh stark net sorry in as part of one of their um, second chains, but when, when Polygon launched ZK EVM, they pivoted and deprioritized stuff net for Polygon because what ZK EVM will do is allow anyone that's built a smart contract direct, directly for um, Ethereum layer one, it will work straight out the box on Immutable's new um, ZK EVM platform. So Interesting. That's that's, what, the, that's yeah. not something I, I I was privy to. So with immutable zk EVM powered by Polygon, they will be able to use existing smart contracts from layer one. Yep, and pretty much anything that's EVM compatible. So that's why the big deal about it is is Polygon is equivalent, not compatible. So like Starknet that they're building is not it's actually its own language. So people have to learn Correct. Rust. And build rust and so they'd have to build that you know so what immutable does which i think altura does but not to the same scale as immutable altura immutable creates um apis so that they create the smart contract and then say 
and built an ecosystem around a layer around that smart contract saying you can inter interact with that smart contract through an API. It's just a technical term you, you know, um, obviously, that means that you send data and re expect a response in return. So you're not, it's not actually invoking your own code or your own contract or your, own, it's just, uh, it's hitting an endpoint of that's got a, a set amount, an expected set of data to return. So it makes it very easy for developers to build on StarkX because they're not actually writing contracts at all. Correct. Um, they're, and you're just hitting an API endpoint. And where Immutable ZKM is going to have both. It's going, they're going to have their own um, API, in, just like StarkX, not Immutable X or StarkWare version. They're going to have that on, so that, that developers can come in and just integrate like they did with StarkX, but there'll be way more flexibility because of the equivalency and the flexibility of it. Um, but they're also going to have have it a, a similar API driven environment that for people that don't want to, or different games developers that don't want to know that. And that's um, great because that's going to be able to, to really expand the ecosystem a lot for those different types of games or those different types of developers. And it, it really, um, it kind of actually kind of feeds into the the gaming SDKs, if you will, if I'm, I'm as I'm looking at the the chart here, is that it kind of rolls into that streamlined um, development stack, really, and and that's that's the biggest thing. Um, you you really do have a full suite of tools at your disposal or your you know it's a disposal uh to be able to cover everything from hey if you do need these um zk evm compatible contracts smart contracts you have the ability to do that if you don't want to have to deal with it and you or if you don't need to deal with it then you don't have to as well and and i i really like that approach that they they've done here yeah it's um it's definitely and it will help them expand their their, their reach of who can build on it. for example cyber girls they their their products built on immutable x and they build like they have a crafting system that's completely centralized on aws and then it comes back and spits out an NFT later on. So there is a way, that's what Immutable thought was going to happen, I believe, that you're going to use the centralized systems to create all the, the real functional stuff, upgrading of NFTs and things like that, which is very which is very hard to do on Stark X because of the limitations. But ZK EVM, which is Ethereum, is available to any contract. So all these new contracts that enable smart NFTs and smart, smart contracts and things like that, that uh, you can upgrade that NFT in the game, which is something you haven't noticed with any IMX games until this ZK EVM comes out. And so, so getting back to Cyber Girls, you know, six months ago they said that they were, may have to go off Immutable to do this crafting stuff. But now with ZK EVM, they'll, they'll probably stay in and more favor to ZK EVM. Well, I haven't actually chased that up. I might chase them up. I, I participated in, in the, the Cyber Girls uh, Mint as well, and I was kind of bummed when they mentioned that they may have to uh, seek a different uh, strategy when it came to release because of that. Um, but it, it does look like they were able to figure it out. And um, uh, the, the upcoming... Uh, game that they're they're releasing looks like it will be um on immutable still yeah no they they really want to stay there um but they it was something with oasis the uh, japanese company that started a, a optimistic roll-up um technology why would you do that I don't know when everyone's going to zk but um they were sort of like partner with them in some way as well but so i thought maybe they might leave to go there but they haven't yet um and that also highlights why Immutable wins so many um, card TCG kind of games for their platform because absolutely like, you don't you don't update. Yeah, you know, it's really simple what you need, and you get a card. And if you want to 
upgrade it, you can just burn it and set, send the upgraded version. There's not too much complexity really required with cards. So yeah, it's um I don't think I think card games will stick with, with the Stark um the Stark X implementation. Keep the gas free. Because obviously ZK EVM is not going to have to be gas free. But that I believe I have a point on that when we get to relayer. <laughs> if we do ever get there. I know, right? Um <laughs> No, and then and, and that's a good point, right? There 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 is no reason for a game like uh gods unchained to go through and and have to really outside of of major updates right but that they kind of i'm kind of eating my own words as i'm saying this because they are kind of restructuring the code structure of um Gods Unchained right now because they did find a technical limitation to what they were ha- the the format they were doing it in, but the there really is not a reason for any of the TCG games to have to go to an EVM um, deployment strategy, right? So I I, I I do agree with what you said there. Gods and Chain are not going. They've they've confirmed that in their last town hall, I think it was. Yeah, they they they, they they said they weren't because they were able to figure out how they were going to recode, do some of the updates and recode uh, without it. And they said, "Hey, we we don't need to go to it." So that that was yeah. cool. Um, so passport back to that. It's been built for ZK EVM first. So we probably won't see it available on the StarkX games until, into, until 2024 sometime, probably, is a guess. Uh, but ultimately, you know, Passport is a massive game changer. It's I know we spent a lot of time on it, but it, it really is. I've actually got a heap of gamer mates because I've been gaming for so many years, and I've said, come play this game. You've just got to download, you know, under blocks, you know, even though that was frictionless. But when I told them about Passport and the difference between the gas-free and the wallet system, and if you want to turn it over one day, you can. I've actually been able to get some of my friends to actually try. They, I've got two of them going to try um, uh, Metal, Core, uh, Metal Core when it comes out. Um, so, you know, it's. I think it's a, that the passport's going to enable like you to convince your mates to come and play a crypto game because they don't need to worry about wallets, you know, or crypto. So, yeah. Um, and order book, we talked about that. It's. You know, it's the global order book. It's it was uh, is, Myria is the only ones that copied them. Call it a universal order book. They haven't got any other um, uh, um, what they're called marketplaces yet to join with them. I don't think um, blockchain APIs. That's uh, that's about I guess de- you know data about the blockchain, but also about the gaming data that's available within the Correct. game. The actual you know, assets, ship. right? Yeah. So, one thing do we you have any thought of that? One thing we didn't check, uh, touch on yet was the minting. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, well, on ZK EVM, all I know about that is it's um, free to mint, which normally isn't free for and no no gas, no cost, and no percentage fee. And that's huge. Right. Um, and and that that comes in several different ways, right? The oh. the overhead costs, the upfront costs to actually um, actually getting these games and assets, in game assets on chain and ready for uh, the consumer is now that barrier to entry um, has been lowered. That's huge. Um, one of the things on here as well is the checkout. Um, I was able, I was, I was able to get a sneak peek um, at the checkout myself. Um, I, I well, did, okay. a, <laughs> I did a little uh, customer or user interview with uh, Immutable a couple weeks back, and they, uh, they wanted to see my input on how it looked and things like that. And it, it actually looks 
you know, really intuitive, which is nice. Um, it It's really nice because it gives um, the user the breakdown of what they're actually spending um, their funds on, as well as the ability to change uh, currencies if they don't have what they need for, for gas or for something of that nature. Um, right. So with the immutable ZK EVM setup, um, there will be gas fees on that. And when transactions are done in, and, um, and they did make the statement that IMX will be the gas token for that. Yep. So I was actually part of that as well. Um, that uh, about a month ago. Yeah, it was about a month ago, right? Yeah. So yeah. that was those. It looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it looked great. <laughs> like um, uh, the the way that they had it displayed and everything seemed intuitive. Um, there was definitely there were two different ones that they went over, right? And there was one that was definitely more intuitive in terms of how it showed. Uh, what was what was what and how it was being spent or where it was being spent. Um, yeah. But yeah, it it was nice to see that they spent um, enough time on 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 that portion because it can be confusing to someone who is not used to it. Right. Um, yeah. it's, it's ultimately a dex. For, yeah, for absolutely. Okay. It is. But, but a bit better than that. Because it's got, you know, fiat bought, built into it. It'll be tied into your passport, um, you know. So it'll it'll be. I, I the, the flow of it was so simple, so easy to see, um, you know. And it's going to be a big uh, game changer for them as well. For the, as as my IMX token holders, but also, you know ability to transfer God's token into Ethereum, for example. Like the moment people, there's no, actually no, there's a little third party guy that builds this little app that's got 70 people that has used it total, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of gamers playing God's Unchained and he's got, he, he's little known at the moment that he's built that, a God's to F swap you know, his private one with his own private wallet, sort of real hack job. <laughs> so it's a right. real and truly needed product. Yeah, um, I, I was very sad when I saw Immutaswap go down. Um, and and I have been eagerly waiting the day for for something to to arise from its ashes, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then one of the last things on here before we get to the relay is the gaming SDKs. Um, I wanted to touch on that because the amazing job of, of the team of Immutable getting a streamlined U Unity SDK for um, development on, on Immutable. Um, you know, an ungodly number of games are made in Unity today. And um, it's it's just going to be more uh, moving into the future and having a streamlined um, development SDK for games is huge. Um, really, it it shows the the commitment to helping meet the developers uh, at ground level. You know, it shows that they, Immutable understands what is necessary to get a lot of these bigger game developers over or make it easier for some new developers to come in, right? Um, yep. And I really, I really applaud them on that. They did an upgrade to so the SDKs are not just the Unity thing. That they've, they've got anything you can think of that needs a tighter blockchain is built on it with an SDK, pretty much enabled. Um, and they've been building these for years. That's the that's where their core focus has been on for the last three years, and why they're a bit slower to 
to get to these other things that we think like checkout and things and passport because these SDKs are, are critical. And their last update, they reduced the code like from their SDKs. So increased capability and reduced the code lines from like 30 or 40 percent. Yeah, I saw that update. Yeah, and then they updated the, the, the um, documentation to to just make it. And everyone, I saw feedback from developers about you know in the chat in the dev chat saying, "Wow, this is such a chance transformation for us. It's making our lives so much easier." So there's that people don't understand that even that like you know there's there's other SDK de developers out there, other chains like Altura that have it, but you know Miria has that as well. And I've seen a lot of comments say that their SDKs are garbage, and that's why, for example, I believe Search for and Miria came to changed over from Miria to to Immutable because of the gaming SDKs was part of the driver of that. So. Yeah, I mean, um, really, that, 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 a platform is really only as good as its SDKs and the documentation to support it, right? Um, yeah. it, it it takes a lot of time to um, to make the game assets and things like that in, in and of themselves. But when you get to the actual nitty gritty of development, it is, there's nothing worse than trying to figure out how something was implemented with an SDK and there isn't the proper documentation to, to teach you where to look. Yeah, I think that's being a software developer myself and working in a team, I've just changed jobs from a company that had a really poor structure of code and spent two and a half years change, overhauling the whole process of developing. We went from taking three to four months to release a feature to two weeks. But because of that, underground like development work that we did for the to build proper processes proper architecture and streamline things like art like the the type of code you write as well so it's maintainable code and so i think that's not seen by the public and you know you get you get 100 devs working on one product um and think, well, they've got 100 devs, why aren't they going as fast as the guys? <laughs> it's, it's because of the way you do things matters in coding. And Absolutely. People do not understand that. And I'm finding that out my new job where we've got a new exact same story. A CTO joined three months ago that's inherited a bonfire. And it, literally, we've got 13 devs putting out all we've got is fire extinguishers going, how do we put out this fire today? <laughs> it's yeah. literally like that every day. But we've got a plan to get out of that. And I think what Immutable has done is they've, they've probably, they would have got to market fast, found themselves in that position where their code wasn't as great, their systems weren't as great. But now I heard you heard a few comments about Robbie. Uh, there was one other person as well mentioned about the, the velocity of code is going to be faster now because they've spent that three years. Normally companies get to market as quickly as they can. And then they go, okay, let's expand, but they're stuck because they've gone to market too quick, but they need to do that as well at the start. So I think Amid was gone for personally, I don't know for sure, but I, I would guess that, that they've gone through that, that process of improving the environment, the ability to build code. And then now at that, you're going to see stuff coming out like checkout, passport, you know, better, more SDKs, Unity, Unity's. SDKs are quite limited at the moment, the mutable uh, Unity SDK, and I've heard that from a developer. Um, and you know, in the future, they said they might come back to to, to, to mutables, but bridges, relayers, all this stuff, it's gonna it's gonna just start to ramp up a lot quicker because they've you know there's signs that they've built that layer that you need to to be able to build quickly on top of it. Right. So let's uh let's go into a little bit about the bridges and relayers. You said you you kind of wanted to to touch on those here. Yeah. So the relayer, you know what a relayer is, but I'll make sure everyone knows. Yeah. Let's it's, go into it. It's the ability to transact in the background. So, for example, you know you want to pay gas. There's a gas payment. Then and you don't have any IMX tokens, but you've got God's tokens you can pay the gas with, with the gods token and it doesn't change the, the system the the blockchain doesn't allow gods to pay for 
for the, the gas, but the relayer is the code that is like the intermediary that changes it for you in the background. So it's it's that flexibility around token payment. But also what I'm excited about is I'm pretty certain Mutual are going to have this, is that they'll enable the developer of the game to set up a wallet with a token in it and pay the gas for their gamers. So right. they keep gaming, keeping gamers game ta uh, gas free. And I, I've Ooh, seen no I've seen that um, uh, other chains have done something like that. I know um, uh, Mythical they did that for a few of their games for for a short period of time, where um, yeah. they were refunding gas fees for um, for people doing certain uh, tasks that they were supposed to do to move assets uh, for staking or anything like that. Right. So um, the ability to do that through relayer and um, ability for games to do that for future um, is, is huge. Well, what people don't understand though, is that these gas, these chains are like 20, 30 cents a transaction. And a game, a developer to do that, to put a make a wallet and pay for people's gas would be bankrupt them in no time, or as long as they weren't growing, they'd start to lose a lot of money. Where Absolutely. Immutable ZKVM is, it's rolling up thousands of transactions into one Ethereum cost. Correct. So, you, you, 1,025 cents for a dollar. So, you know, but also on top of that, um, Immutable is building a Validium roll-up on top of the Polygon ZK EVM. So it'll be nine, you know, thousands of transactions times a thousands of roll-ups. So it, the, the developer could put $100 into the rel relayer and it'd be enough of gas for a year for 500, you know, 5,000 games. Exactly. So, you know, that kind of thing. It's not like AVAXs where they are going to get charged with the roof to do, you know, start their own subnet, set up their system so they make it gas free, but it's going to, you know, the gas is still pretty high on that chain. It's not a ZK technology. Correct. So, yeah, that, that's the big difference. People don't get, I don't think yet either. I don't understand. Well, I'm not saying everyone doesn't understand that, but a lot of people might not understand that. Right, and then I don't think, like, the... I don't. I don't think that there are enough um, use cases on those other uh, chains right now either for other people or a lot of other people to really see where that's going to eat up a lot of funds. Right? Um, it's just it's not prevalent enough for them to see um, how much is actually being taken because they're not really using it. Right. So um, that's that's therein lies the problem for for them to see it. They won't see it till they actually try it. Right. And for some people, that means they'll never try it because that friction to even get on board is going to be a deterrent. Yeah, but like, so for example, let's go with Shrapnel. Shrapnel have said that they're going to make some of their things, their their transactions free. And why is that? Because they're relying on only their activity. They're, they have their own subnet. They have their own activity. And so depending on the number of players playing the game at one day is, will be the efficiency of their gas transactions. Correct. Um, where Immutable, every single transaction that happens on, on their ZK EVM blockchain, no matter what game it is, no matter what DeFi tool it is, no matter what NFT trade, any action at all that happens across the whole entire ecosystem will be bundled into that roll up to to make the gas cost too immutable virtually non-existent correct so they'll be able to that that gives them the flexibility to you know empower their people that choose to build on their platform with 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 gas free gaming still and that's what i think they'll announce they've just trying to work it out I think that's going to be one of the things they're going to announce when they finally um, get the ZK EVM out and it might be part of those two things to come out that maybe 
there's some kind of integration into that for providing liquidity and things like that. I don't know. And so, that would make sense, yeah. really. It's kind of like Tesla selling their cars for five thousand dollars cheaper and still being three times more market cap. That's right, three times more. They sell their cars, they reduce the cost by five thousand dollars, and they're still three times more profitable on their cars. They have that power to do that because they're in that position. It's a similar thing with immutable ZKVM, I believe that that because it's not isolating companies out, they don't have to worry about the gas all on their own. They're all in it together. So yeah, I think I'm sure there'll be other chains that do that, but I'm I'm, I'm not sure which ones are doing it at the moment. Yeah, and that's huge. I mean, what you you cover there is not you know isolating per company. It's it it really is a big picture move there. Yeah. Yeah, and bridges. That's the last one we haven't talked about. It's um. It's different on StockX. There's no not like it's not like a side chain. Like the Ronin hack, that's not possible with Immutable. There's nothing stored in value on a, on a bridge that can be taken. I'm wondering will, what will happen with ZK EVM um, when that lease releases. How, how, how is that going to be maintained or if it's going to be, uh, you know, different? I, I think it, because of the way it's going to be stored on security, security is going to be on Ethereum's transaction, on transactions that are happening on Ethereum, that it's going to maintain that that um, high security non-issue that things like Ronin had with their hack and Polygon Depos will have Correct. and other chains that have that are side chain. Correct. But and and I, 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 I fully agree with that because the, the security, the, the, the threat really lays uh, when there is, is that side chain and, and you you have kind of that man in the middle almost attack of, of vulnerability. Yep. Yep. But that's that's um pretty pretty um in depth into mutable. There's a lot more to mutable than this though. Um, it's it's an amazing ecosystem to learn. I, I really enjoy it, and that's probably you know hence why we're here talking about it. But um, yeah, absolutely. I mean. I don't feel like it's been really even that long, and I think we've pretty much filled a, an entire episode almost with just the the ecosystem, you know, and and that's saying a lot. <laughs> just a tip of the iceberg of the ecosystem as well. I know, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's um, it's exciting to see what the next six months and hopefully they can hit their timelines and get check it out, get passport out, get this um, test net out in June. Like they said, it was going to be out maybe July, um, you know, and get, get start to see some, the, the benefits. Like they've kind of like put themselves behind a bit, haven't they with ZK EVM? Like it's, I feel like, like on. I feel like it's been, um, a chicken and the egg type thing, you know, like it's a, it's almost like a hurry up and wait. Uh, it's like the last three months, it seemed like, um, it, I, I felt like they wanted to announce more than they've been able to because of it. So yeah, I, I would agree that it, it kind of set them back a little bit, but, um, big picture, what we've gone over here, I think, really sets them up in the long term for nothing but success. Yeah, so like, like um, there's other chains out now that are ready to go now with all this new technology, you know, that with these throughputs and these all these great AVAX, for example. I like AVAX. So I'm a fan of Coop and his his Twitter account and what they're doing over at AVEX. I, I hope they have a, a good um, history, you know, a good a good future as well. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for them as well. Yeah, they um, were they were over at um, the three XP conference. Um, I was able to go over there and and check it out um, in Pasadena, and you know they okay. they they really did have. Um, you know their team was really friendly, and they had um, they had some games out to playable and everything, and it it did show um, 
some some really positive light from from the AVAX team and it was nice also being there um and seeing the metalcore team from immutable um over there and and I was able to get a, a beta code for the upcoming um beta test in in July that they're going to be doing it's going to be a closed beta so it, it was cool to be able to get a, a code from them and some stickers and stuff from from the team there. Yeah, I got invited to that, but I just didn't have time to do it. Um, unfortunately, I just I wouldn't be the right guy to do it to test it out for them. Yeah, it, with the email. It's what actually I've got, I've got a question for you. Um, what how was three XP? Let's let's want to talk. I'm interested to see about the numbers of people are there, the games and the sentiment. What what was your thoughts? Um, you know, like I, I actually only went the one day and that should tell you enough about it. Um, really it, it, the, the games that were there, um, that they had, you know, the esports arena set up for were like my pet hooligan and, and stuff like that. You know, I'm I'm really not too uh, enthralled with the, with the my pet hooligan too much. Um, it feels a lot like uh, Plants vs Zombies or something like that. Um, it's in in my opinion not something that is going to be a competitively played game, um, but they kind of frame it like it is. Um, so that was that was a little disappointing, um, and so and I really I don't have there? anything against Solana or anything like that. Um, I I feel that there's there's a lot of games and things like that that are in that ecosystem that really will do well. It's um, uh, the the other game they had uh, from Avax they had um, it was loop something loop back or blood loop blood loop they had blood loop that was a pretty cool game actually i i was actually pretty impressed by that one um and then metalcore they they had like the prologue that you could play there which was was good now i will say this i went to nftla and i went to 3xp Mm. NFTLA had zero playables. Nothing was playable at NFTLA. So the jump from NFTLA to 3XP, it's leaps and bounds. You can't actually even compare the two because I feel that they were on a completely different level. Um, Everywhere you turned at 3XP, there were there were PCs. They had um, they had Hyperplay there, the launcher, and um, it was pretty cool to see Hyperplay there because I actually did some audio for Moon uh, Moon Blasters, which is a loopering game that's on there. Um, and and that that was about it. They had some interesting um speakers which i actually enjoyed the speakers more because it kind of goes more into the theory and things like that but um i i really wasn't too impressed because i guess i've done enough research to really know enough about each of the things that <laughs> mm. Okay, so disappointed because of the games that were there. And what what did you say about was Solana there? Were there? I, I didn't see anything at all advertised from the things I saw. Was did Solana have a game set up there? Yeah, they had uh they had a few things there that um that you know looked interesting and and that there was a. It was funny. There was a guy working at the Blood Loop game that was actually wearing a Telos shirt, and I was like, "But you're in the Avax group." <laughs> so I was, I was very confused. I had, I had to ask him a couple questions about what what it is he was doing. So, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's what do we think? We should move on to this. Yeah, let's do it. Now, 
Yeah, let's talk about it. So, yeah. uh, you guys first because <laughs> <laughs> We have GameStop um, and Telus uh, making the announcement. Um, actually, we should say Telus making the announcement for GameStop that they will be doing a partnership. And uh, did you know? If let's see what GameStop tweeted today. Did you know that since the network launched in 2018, TELUS has provided a reliable platform for users? It's built for performance, speed, and efficiency with user experience at the forefront, making ever every interaction smooth, seamless, and seamless. What games do you want to see launched on TELUS? And that's fine all in 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 and and of itself but then they go on to say the future of play is built on telus now this seems to be all fine and dandy coming from a games company saying that the future of gaming is going to be on whatever but there is the partnership with Immutable that's been quite extensive uh, in the works here, and a large sum of money that was given uh, in the partnership. And then to see an announcement coming from uh, Telus and not Immutable in regards to a player. What do you think about this? Yeah, I've got to try and keep my emotion out of it, don't I? Because I feel it's it's a it's a kind of like a backstab move. It, it really isn't it. It's like um, to to a consumer that has seen this part, part partly why I support IMX was the GameStop partnership. I thought that was a great vision of Robbie and the leader of GameStop at the time. And then to see that money go there, go, okay, there's $40 million worth of tokens dumped instantly. I think it was around $40 million once they received it. Immutable copped a lot of flack for that. Then they build a marketplace that has Immutable on it, and then as well as Loopring, which is, again, another, like, okay, I get it now, Loopring... They can control the ecosystem. You know, the thing we mentioned earlier about OpenSea and not being able to control the ecosystem. Correct. It makes sense to have that side of things as well as, as well as um, you know, the immutable, which is they don't get to control. So I understand that now. That, that came, it took me a while to understand that why they, you know, that why immutable would do, allow that to happen if they're going to give that money. Then they set up a $100 million game fund to help build games on the blockchain. And now, and not not Telos makes this statement. GameStop makes the the statement that the future of play is built on Telos. So we find I do some digging and I find in May they the Telos company, whatever they whoever they are, I had to look them up. I thought it was Tezos because I've heard of Tezos before, but apparently yeah. it's different. Is that what? Um, and they've got five games and five. DAOs. Now, announcing that Ready Player DAO is part of your ecosystem is nothing burger. Like, they're on every single ecosystem, and they're a nothing burger organization. And so who cares about any of these DAOs? You've got, so you're not launching a game as a DAO, are you, on, on, an, on, a, on a player? So, like, they've got five games that I've never heard of, like, ever. You know, I do research for gaming on crypto games every day for hours. Yeah. And I've never seen any games other than Blood Rain or Reign of Terror. Reign of Terror, which I've seen partner with about 50 blockchains. Today. Yeah, um, I, I, I've I seen Reign of Terror basically on every blockchain. I don't think I've actually seen any gameplay, though. Um, no. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's, it's, it's baffling. It's... it's 
it's it feels like I, I'd like to know more before I make a full judgment. And, 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 and that's, that's fair, really. Like, um, I mean, I'm I'm sitting here a bit with uh, bated breath myself. Um, you know, I'm I'm a probably one of the most outspoken people in uh, the GameStop community, if you will. Um, I I really tell you know say my opinions and and kind of wear my uh my emotions on my sleeve if you will because i feel very um adamantly about certain things but when it comes to this i i honestly don't don't really blame you for feeling like a, a stab in the back you know um I kind of feel the same way as as someone who's invested a lot of time researching um, my own time as well as teaching people about the ecosystem and how to do certain things um, to come on with uh, a new ecosystem. You know, I said it before I'll, and I'll say it again is it. I think it's great because it brings in, you know, maybe some people that were over there that didn't know about it. But at the same time, as someone who does, has been doing this for, you know, over two years now and really digging deep and trying to find, you know, the best games that are launching, the best ecosystems, all of that. I, I, I really am failing to see or grasping uh, the the idea of what you know what's to come. Now I I've always been kind of a pessimist, so I'll I'll leave it at that. You can you can judge it, take it how you will, but you know this is that's just how I see it, um, and I, I really don't blame anyone for for seeing it you know, that way as well, or, or not seeing it that way. Um, you know, I know that the GameStop community is, is pretty diehard, you know? So when it, when it comes to, um, you know, GameStop, I know a lot of people can, can see that they can do no harm, but, um, we'll see how it plays out. I think it's going to be positive for Telos for sure. And I'm pretty sure they paid GameStop much monies for that a right to make this statements to get them to make those statements for it, you get GameStop to back a dead horse like this like they've had to have paid a lot of money you've got an already big partnership with a with the pretty much the leader in blockchain gaming at least top two because if you count Polygon and the middle as one they're definitely number one and if you count them as separate, they're probably two. And, um, you know, they've got gone partnered with a chain that I didn't have even heard of before. Yeah. There's someone that looks at blockchain gaming every single, single day. And they've got, to my knowledge, five games listed building on their platform. And they've been out since 2018. Not yeah. since not since 2023. They've been out since 2018. And they've got five games on their blockchain. So I, I need to do more research to find out more, but I don't feel per, per, personally backstabbed. I feel like they, and at GameStop, has backstabbed Immutable. You know, they've taken all this money from them and built an ecosystem. It would make so much sense for them to build Player to integrate with IMAX. Yeah. That, that's, I honestly thought, oh, okay, that makes sense. That's why Immutable hasn't built their own one yet. So, you know, I literally thought that's when I, when they signed up with this announcement in the first place, what, three years ago, I was like, or two years ago, whenever it was, they went into partnership, that that would make sense for Immutable to partner with them, to get that name, to get that brand exposure, and to build, for them, for GameStop to build a player and be a, they're a game company. They make more sense than Elixir. They make more sense than Hyperplay. They make more sense than, than, Probably even Steam to be a game player because they're a game shop that yeah. sells games. Yep. You know, and before Steam became that, they were just a game developer. GameStop is a game seller. Yeah. So to make a game player, why make a Web3 one? They should make a game player full stop, like Ultra. 
They should have yeah. bought Ultra and made it made it go, GameStop GameStop Ultra and instead of GameStop Player and so have all games on it. To be honest with you, not not just tell us. So I think maybe this is um, uh, probably a, a payment. You know, some bags of money went their way from Telos, and they were like, "Yep, but we're going to let you know that in, you got exclusive for three months, and then we're going to go." It doesn't make sense. Even if it, Telos becomes the number one blockchain game, blockchain for games somehow miracle happens, it still doesn't yeah, make sense. Yeah, I mean, really, to, to, to make a statement that bold and have really no games on it is is very confusing. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about it. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. You, you, you guys um, can make up your own mind. That's my <laughs> with my knowledge I've got. Yeah, I'm just here looking at. While you were going on, I was sitting here looking at um, the games on Immutable X, and and uh, I kind of drowned out the idea that that Telus had no games because I was sitting here looking at all of these games on on IMX and. Uh, it's it's just incredible, um, you know. Toll in Worlds, uh, Meta Fight. You have M- Momoguro that's coming out soon. Ooh, can't oh, wait for that my one. Gosh, <laughs> I'll be uh, waiting for that one. Their music's so cool. Did you listen to it? Yeah. Play their music right now, play their music right now. Their latest video, man. Like their Roblox music's awesome. Um, I love it. I don't. I'm not a big music fan. I often turn music off in games when I like Diablo. Bang, Diablo Four. Installed it. First thing I did, audio music off. And um, you know, but another guru. I can't wait to, because of their music. It's, they're so catchy. But given the fact that this this team is is very cutting edge and and has been doing things differently for a long time, um, I mean, Bobab Studios is is really a a game changer in terms of, of animation, let alone, you know, bridging the gap to, to games as well. Yeah, no, they're, they're um, yeah. Doing, good, doing, doing good things. It's, tri- it's triple, a, in, triple A creatives, which is like, they're not triple, triple A developers, they're probably a little massive, which is a new studio. I actually kind of connected with their head of studio there and he was kind of interested in me joining them. And I was like, nah, man, that's not my thing, blockchain development. Um, and they're, they're like pretty new to blockchain. Um, development so that side of thing is new and they're doing pretty well on that side they did screw up the the mint you know on, on the on the net on main net um but they've recovered from that pretty quickly and their latest stuff that they've released has been really smooth i, I think number guru is going to have a really bright future um it, that ip that world i think if they if it takes off they'll build a an rpg open world explorer kind of game like for sure in the future yeah i agree yeah yeah i agree uh, um and yeah i mean they, they release on the 13th with it which is just around the corner so i'm, I'm really excited to see that yeah so this is some big uh, GameStop Alluvium uh, news happened a couple of days ago. Want to tell us about that? Yeah, um, Alluvium and GameStop have announced that they are going to be releasing a limited um, disc run, which means that you will be able to purchase a uh, custom, or excuse me, not custom, limited edition GameStop and Alluvium Alluvatar discs. And this is a genius move um, on both parts, not only because the collectability of the the Iluvatars themselves, but um, the unique uh, characteristics of these Iluvatars are just adorable. Um, when looking at the Iluvatars as they are non-GameStop, they're adorable, but you add little nostalgic um, little reminders of of GameStop from, you know, throughout the ages or little um, pop culture references to uh, the GameStop community is just, it's awesome. And being able to own a part of that history through um, a special Louvatar is, is just genius. And um, it's pretty cool. They're, they're having it so that they're pre-bonded, which means that the accessories and everything that typically come with um, other Alluvials won't be there. They will already be attached to your Alluvatar, um, which is pretty cool because, you know, it, it can be kind of confusing when you're trying to, to bond some of these things and some of the people may not be as as um, deep into the, the background of, a, of Alluvium yet and f- bringing on new players um, it's, this is the best part of it. If you buy the Alluvatar uh, from the GameStop promo, um, you're actually getting automatically a beta to be able to play Alluvium um, which is perfect. Um, I can't think of an easier way to get access to, to something and then just 
purchase this Iluvatar and you'll have access to to the beta of this game. And the game is absurd. Uh, it, like in one word, uh, it's absurd. It it looks gorgeous. Um, the uh, the physics and mechanics of the game um, in Overworld are uh, stunning. Um, I'm not a huge fan of auto battlers, but the the um, uniqueness in each of the different alluvials when they're battling is pretty cool. Um, seeing some of these alluvials when they do their their special, um, some of the stuff is is incredible. Um, and then you have like the city builder, which is is really fun too in Alluvium Zero, and giving everyone access to to be able to play all three games um, is is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. I didn't know that about the, the that it offered beta access as well. Yeah, they just um, announced it yesterday. I think they got the right momentum, Illuvium. Uh, I'm on your side with the. I, I never paid too much interest in it, interest in it at the start because it was at the auto battle arena. You know, yeah. like talking about team fight tactics. And I'm a Dota player, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Eleven thousand out of Dota, and I've, I've I loaded up Underlords. They call the Dota. Actually, Dota Underlords was the a, a creator of this style of game, um, as far as I know, and it. Well, it was one of the, the first big ones, or if not the big, big first big one. And then Team Fight Tactics copied it, and I, I loaded it. And it was like, well, boring, nothing burger, turn it off, delete. And so I just saw that this is that. But then when I saw the bigger vision come out, I was like, uh, I'm late to the party here. <laughs> so I actually faded it when I was buying anything. The stuff I bought, I would never even admit that I bought it. You know, these days when I were, when I had all this Axie money coming in, um, I bought. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one in a legacy. Deed, you know that legacy game on Gala Games? Yep. I bought like, it was like $6,000 or something stupid like that. I don't know. And um, yeah, that was a massive mistake. Um, so yeah, if I could have gone back, I would have put that money into Lubium, to be honest with you, because I think it's going to be huge, um, especially when they bring out the overworld in its full glory, where it's explorable with multiple people working as teams to collect items. That's, that's where they could really make this go through the moon. You know, when, you know, imagine that you need a team of 20 people to collect, to capture a Alluvial, Alluvita, uh, Alluvial, sorry, not Alluvita, in the future. You know, that, that could be amazing. I'm pretty sure they'll do it in, you know, three, four years time. But um. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go no, sorry. Yeah, I, I was just saying, like when you when you go and you're like, hey, um, I'm gonna need fifteen to twenty of my good friends from this game to be able to have stand a chance to catch this thing. Um, that's when it's really gonna start uh, taking off. When when you look at games like World of Warcraft or things of the like, and you see the staying power that that a game like that has, it's in these connections and in these um raid events if you will where things get pretty dicey and these these real world relationships you know are struck up and, right. and things like that well that's one of my best friends is a guy i met in uh, a game called everquest before world of warcraft right that was the that was the game that was hardcore we used to have 100 people on raids 100 people and still fail <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> it was like coordinating 100 people uh eventually they made it instances and you can only get 72 in <laughs> only 72 people and then well come out and limit it to 40 and then cut that down to 20. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to these big world raids and, and I remember killing a, a, a character called Koronav, uh, the avatar of water, who we'd been trying to kill for 18 months and failing for 18 months. And that unlocked a new zone for us that gave us all this like new awesome items we could get because of killing that. Uh, I was buzzing that much. It was about four in the morning when we finally killed it and I didn't sleep. I just stayed up. And didn't go to <laughs> I was buzzing from energy. That's what those kind of games can give you. You know, nothing single player can do that for you. Nothing. So, yeah. yeah, and I, what, what, what alluvial do you think is going to be like the the one that everyone's going to be buzzing for? It you, you think it's going it's going to be Ramphy? Yeah, but I, I I think that what I'm talking about isn't round one. This is season three or four or five when they get this in place, get the you know the single player down pat, then they'll introduce the overworld kind of alluvials being uh, rather than a dot that you you know they'll be in the world that you capture yeah then they'll make it a they'll make a group of group content where you can go in together and try and get it and compete with other guilds to get the best items and there'll be ramfire version 500 you know yeah. like not ramfire a different thing they create yeah so that's what i'll be so that's when i'd be for all in on a game like that where you would where i could send the best arena battler to, from my guild to go and fight <laughs>